had his camera stolen in a studio on set during a shoot. Yeah. Well, the day. Should... <laughs> you used to be on set. Now, what I'm selfishly using this podcast time for is to plan my new body of work. Welcome back. This is episode 11 of the podcast. And this week I'm joined with Rob and we are discussing what it's like to date a photographer, um, why we're a bit of a pain, and we're going to discuss my new body of work and we're going to plan it in real time because we need to do this anyway. So making it a podcast. Rob's had no brief on this whatsoever. So this is new to him. Um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to cr crack on and do that. What have you been up to this week, Rob? Well, this last two weeks since we last did a podcast. Well, it's been actually fairly exciting. Uh, I've had a, a, a number of uh, DOP jobs come in as, a, as an indie filmmaker. Oh, now for those who don't know, what's a DOP? Oh, um, Director of Photography. Yeah. They did try to change it to DP, but they clearly didn't Google that acronym before the, the, the internet happened. Got, so. to, got to Google it first. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. It's like the editing software GIMP. Like... Yeah, it's, Googling that's high risk. Yeah, it's, it's, it won't come up on page one. Let's just put it that way. No, no, no. So, what, 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 are you allowed to say what you've been DOP uh, on? Well, I'm actually representing Dead Bar today, oh, nice. uh, which is um, one of the, the films I'm involved in. Um, it's uh, the one we discussed on a previous podcast. It's the yep. based around perspectives and neurodivergence and all sorts of interesting things. So, I've got that. Um, the other bits I don't really know until I kind of get on set with. Um, it's just, Rob, are you available? Can you do this help? Gun for hire. Hired gun. What's yes, the word? Yeah. Hired so, gun? Hired gun. Gun for hire. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Was, was Springsteen, yeah. So for gun for hire. Yeah. Dancing in the dark. Good tune for That's the a boss. Good tune. Um, and then, yeah, then we've been doing um, again, some more, more 3D motion graphics of late. Lovely. Um, and then some, you know, less interesting stuff like uh, you know, catalogues and product packaging and, th and this sort of thing. The bread and butter work. Exactly. Stuff that's got to pay them bills. Brilliant. Okay. So, yeah. So, and for those who don't, don't know, uh, director of photography is moving image, not still image. Um, Correct. It, it, in the industry, we talk about moving or still. So I'm a stills photographer. You'd be classed as a moving photographer. Predominantly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was quite a deliberate thing for me, as, as you know, I've kind of uh, obviously followed your work for many years and, uh, you know, I've done much still photography myself in my time. Um but unlike yourself, I didn't make it to the big leagues of the of the commercial world. Now, locally, especially being Leicester being a relatively small town, as you know, there's hundreds of photographers in Leicester. Most of there them are um, jack, of, jack of all trades, jobbing photographers. Yeah, yeah. And it's as you always said, find your niche, try and try and you know separate yourself from the crowd. And the way I did that simply was moving to moving images because there's very, very few videographers in Leicester and actually even fewer that are actually like really good. There's like a handful Definitely. for probably name, but that's about it. Yeah, and I, and I think the barrier to entry is higher as well, isn't it? Now, I, I've just noticed, and you're, you're going to probably tell me this is a stupid thing, air conditioning's on. Does that matter at all? No, uh, hopefully the AI built into uh, DaVinci will sort that. Super, this is brilliant. I love Cause, it. Because you remember when we've, we've tried the, the Clicky McClickerson on your um, Pocket Wizards? Completely gone. <laughs> None of that yes, happened. yes, absolutely. Um, okay, that's perfect. And um, yeah, so yeah, have, having that sort of less, um, what's the word for it? Comp no, higher barrier to entry is quite useful in video. Like the cameras are, they're not more expensive. Well, they are more expensive, the high end ones, but so more than the stills ones. But like for what we use, they're similar prices, but. You can get a stills camera that does a bit of decent video. You can't get a video camera that does a bit of decent stills. No, and um, as you know, 2019, I, I made the big switch to Black Magic. Yeah, we love Black which, Magic in here. Which you only found out, like, I think, literally like, during our last podcast that it actually takes a still photo or is, has the ability yeah, to no do so. Mine can also autofocus, but not whilst filming. But Yeah, it's like a one-time autofocus at the start a little bit. Yeah, I don't quite understand why they put that in there. It seems like a waste of money. Um, well, just to just to tick the autofocus yeah, box I guess for, so. for the um, the Sony and Canon shooters, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's you know the nah, nah. He wants autofocus. Well, we'll get to autofocus in a bit because I do have an autofocus problem at the moment, uh, or requirement more to the point. Now, what I'm selfishly using this podcast time for is to plan my new body of work, which Rob will obviously be heavily involved in in both a technical and an editing style, I guess. Um, and this is the portrait body of work, which I've been harping on about on YouTube for a year. What's actually happening, I'm trying to find subjects, which is proving difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. Um, 
but it's mostly because I don't really know where I'm looking at the moment. Because I don't want, mo- normally you just go to a modeling agency, but that's not what I want. I want interesting individuals, mm. not models. Um, but I have a few issues. One being that my camera is a bellows camera, um, which doesn't move fast, doesn't have autofocus, and you can't handhold. So I, I've first of all got the, the issue of what am I going to shoot these on? Um, and to hand, I have a 5DSR and a Fuji 100. The question is, which one do I buy a lens for? Because I do need a lens with autofocus because people will be moving. Um, if I start hammering a 100 megapixel f- camera, is that just going to cause chaos in terms of file size, data size, and all the rest of it? Or, and also the lenses are expensive, they're about two and a half, three grand each. Whereas I can probably get like a 50 millimeter 1.2. Let me ask, let me ask the internet what I can get a 50 millimeter 1.2 for. So Canon EOS 50 1.2 used. Well, there must be used. I don't think you can get brand new. MVP. Oh my word. 550 quid. I mean, like, I, so the, I can get that or I can spend an extra 1500 and get something on the medium format. Both are absolutely financially fine to do. I want a slightly wide lens. I don't want a traditional portrait lens. I want distortion. Yeah, because normally you go for like the 85, wouldn't you? Yeah, 85, 105. That is not what I want. So what do I do? What do I go for here? I mean, ease of use and everything else, you would go with the Canon version. You would, wouldn't you? Um, And I was actually chatting very briefly. I, I saw that a guy, a photographer I know... Uh, he's worked with me once before, but he's a photographer very much in his own right. He's a very talented portrait photographer. Had his camera stolen in a studio on set during a shoot. Somebody broke in, stole the camera and ran off. It was wow. his 5DSR with a 51.2. I sent him a message. And I was like, oh, really sorry, that sucks. Um, and he was like, oh, it's fine. I've got a backup camera. His backup camera is the R5 with the 51.2. He doesn't like the R5 as much because it's mirrorless and he doesn't like looking at a digital display while shooting. Yeah, I, I can I can relate to that 100%. I've had the um, opportunity over the last 12 months or so um, to sort of occasionally use um, the EOS R, which was the first mirrorless from, from Canon. Yeah. Um, and I just cannot get on with it, man. Like, it doesn't focus the same way that my 6Ds do and just everything about it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, and I mean, I don't like using it on my Fuji. Um, sorry about the microphone wobble there I've, just, I've moved myself back since getting up um, I don't like using the, the live view at all on my Fuji but the image quality is much better mm. on the Fuji is it enough? Like, I mean, like, so we're looking here at a I've got, I've got MPB Open who still don't sponsor this podcast but we'll be, uh, we'll be hitting them up because like I'm sure I am their number one advertiser um, but that you can get a 55mm which is obviously it's on a bigger sensor so it'll probably come out at about 45 mm because it's not real medium format, yeah. Um, but it is bigger. So it, it'll be about the same as a 50. It won't be miles off at least. That's £2,279, or I can spend £600 and get... The Canon one. Canon one. Which is easier, faster. Da, 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 da. Will I be happy with the Canon? I mean, again, now just based on the experiment we did the other week, where we compared your the burger shots yeah. from the Fuji yeah. to the Canon. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know. Yeah, though apparently in the comments, everyone knew straight away. I think that's just based on the um, dynamic range, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because that 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 was quite obvious on the plinth, but the actual burger, and, I, and I'll stand by this because I did the edit for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, burger for burger, there wasn't much in it. No, I don't think so either. So I think, like, for the sake of... I'll say, how much will I save? So this is how I look at it. I'm going to save, like, £1,600. That's, like, three test shoots. That's significant, yeah. Yeah, that's so I can get... Use a cheaper camera, which is still fine. 5D SR, whatever it is. Yeah. People are still using that professionally, very much so. Get myself a 51.2. I have got the 24-105 autofocus lens, but I don't like zoom lenses. No, you've got the Sigma on, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It zooms the wrong way as well. It zooms in the Nikon direction. Yeah. Which is heinous. Um, which I'm sure Nikon shooters think if they ever moved to a Canon, they're like, whoa, was it the other way around? Um, so I'll probably get rid of that lens. Probably going to get rid of my 100mm Milvus as well, because I've not used it in a year. 
That's sad. I, know, I do like that lens, but uh, maybe I'll keep it. Because if I'm going to go 50 for one lens and 100 for the other in case I do need a standard on well, the camera. Yeah, because I mean, the, the rule of buying lenses, it should be double the focal length of, yeah, the, yeah. of the one next door to it. Exactly, exactly. But... Yeah, that's, that's probably a good shout, actually. Milvis 100, Canon 50, although the Milvis is manual focus, which is a bit of a dog for people. But yeah, I'm thinking, probably going to order this, probably tonight. And the good thing with buying secondhand lenses is, if it is the wrong thing, six months down the line, I can sell it. It's still worth exactly what you just paid for. Yeah, it, exactly. So. Um, which is something we used to do on shoots um, when we shot predominantly Canon. If I needed like four camera bodies and I'd only got two at that point, I'd buy two and then resell them and charge a rental fee to the clients. Mm which is basically an admin fee for sorting it out. But the problem that happened with that was I often for, didn't get around to selling them. And then I was just hoarding kits for no reason because I'm yeah. lazy. Um, which is, yeah, you know, which is good. It's good. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking kit-wise. Now, background-wise, when we shoot food, it often doesn't matter what colour the background is because we cut it all out. And we get it exact for the brand colours. It, it, it kind of matters in terms of like shadows, reflections yeah. and those sort of things. So as I say, we always try and get the colour, at least in the ballpark of, of where you want to be in the in the final shot. Yeah. Because yeah. there's nothing worse. And you have done it to me where <laughs> we, 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 it was shot on grey in a see-through bottle. And yeah, then you yeah. said, I want that to be green now, Rob. And I was like, thank you, Scott. That's, uh, that's, that's going to take me a minute. It was doable, though. It, it, was, was, it doable. was done. Yeah, you challenged me, so, you know, it got done. But Who was that for? That was for the GoPro fad, for her, wasn't it? That was, and it wasn't just they wanted it green. We wanted it seven different colours, but yeah. they didn't at the time, so we shut up yeah, the grey. Yeah, so and they wanted the transparency through the bottle to look real. Yeah. And it did. It yeah. looked wicked. And it did. Um, but it, it did take a little while. It did take a minute. It took a bit of a head scratch to figure now, out the methodology of that one. Cutting out a bottle is one thing. Cutting out hair everywhere. Oh, it's awful. Absolutely awful. So um, we're, we're wanting to shoot on the actual backgrounds that we're wanting to shoot on, yeah, aren't we? Like, with the best will in the world, and again, obviously, you know, the, the subjects of selection tools in Photoshop does come up and people tell you, oh, there's this new thing, you just do that, and you see their staged perfect example yeah, yeah. on the keynote, and it never works like that in real life. I've never, quite. To this day, there's, there's nothing that really does... If you're talking something of billboard level where you will see strands of hair... There's no way to cut that out. There just yeah. isn't. Uh, you know, anyone can challenge me on this, and I will challenge you back, saying that no, that oh, yeah. something has to go and something has to give when you're trying to change a background where hair is involved. You know, even if you've got a really dark hair against a really light background, that's the best case scenario. But even that, when you're talking single strands, there's no way to really separate. That. More resolution would help in that scenario, though, wouldn't it? Resolution helps, but it's you still you don't get over the, the, the issue that you such even a strand of hair might be, you know, maybe one pixel of a line. Yeah. Like you can select some of it and, and get close but you'll never get it perfect to the yeah. point where you can go from a white background to a blue background you know, like haloing without any, without any of the, of the, of the haloing and, and, and it's associated with it. So, you know, and again, you can come in and then by the time we then start trying to mask that and you can, you know, you can do all that, but now you're losing detail to get that. So, and I think one of the, so one of the reasons we background replace on my sheets is because they're small sets. And all the texture is visible on that background, which is yeah. too much because of the depth of field and everything else. It's too much. When I'm shooting a portrait, I'm probably going to be at, what, F8, F10? Mm. The background's going to be gone. It'll be out of focus anyway. Yeah, but it so, still doesn't help you from the point of trying to separate. No, but I mean, in terms of like where we're having to like fix text. Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to do that. Yeah. An issue. So I need to go, like, I've got lots of lovely, subtle hues on the background wall over there. They're no use to me anymore. So I need to go and buy some big, bright backgrounds. Yep. Some nice colour armors or whatever brand I go for. I'll probably head down to the Flash Centre in Birmingham so I can look at them because it's quite hard to tell on yeah, the internet. What is it what like in real life versus... Yeah. Uh... And then I guess it's just working out how I'm going to light all of this. Um, so I know what my work's going to look like, which was the first sort of challenge. It's, it's going to look like my food work. It's mm. going to be hard. It's going to be detailed. Not in like a, oh, look how sharp this lens is detailed, but like everything in focus on the subject matter. Yeah. There's going to be none of this like blurry ears going out and stuff. It'll be like the person will be sharp. Yeah. Again, okay, that was a fad for about five yeah, minutes. Yeah. Everything it? at one point. I'm going to buy a 1.2 lens, but it's going to be at F11 to F16. Um, and I want that really nice, crisp, specular light on the subject. So I'd imagine it's going to be a case of using just reflectors to light the person. Yeah. And then... I'd imagine I'm going to want to light the background with reflectors as well. So it's got that specularity mm. to the background. So it's not 
soft, wishy-washy, like strip box lighting on the background, followed by... Yeah, Because like you can tell the difference between what, what modifier you use on a background. It changes the way the colour is like presented to the camera, doesn't it? Yeah, and the, and the gradients and everything. Yeah. So. A bit worried about space in here. Well, Whether I've got enough. I mean, with a 50, I should be okay. We'll have the background yeah. up against the back wall. But it's what like the width for lighting. But if I move some stuff around, Teddy's going to have to move his little... Yeah, it's Teddy's pen. pen. Have Teddy's to... pen. Well, I probably won't have Teddy when I'm shooting people. It would be a, a bit too much for a dog to have flashes firing and loud music. So he'll have a day at home. Um, but yeah, so editing wise, we don't need anything particularly capturing. It's not like I've got to worry about back plates and stuff like I did with other things, is it? It's just getting the exposure right and yeah, and then a bit of you know beautification. Yeah, what, what will you be doing in post of these images for me? Um, it sort of depends on on who, what, and again, as you know, my rule of thumb when it comes to um, retouching skin is if there's you know a little spot, a pimple. These are, well, I would say, non-permanent features of people, yeah, yeah. like your little love scratch from Teddy, for example. Yeah, well, uh... um, that's uh, ordinarily that's not there, and that's fine. I would normally get clean and get rid of that. But in terms of things like, you know, uh, as a man of a certain age now, you know, the little crow's feet that pop up and various things, this is now part of me. If I start yeah. smoothing all that out, all of a sudden it's not you're not representing the person anymore. Yeah, and and I think that's a good a good point actually. I I am wanting to photograph real people, not just go down to like select models and get like the most beautiful people in. Um, I, I do want to shoot some of those people as well, but I don't want it to just be like perfect people. Yeah. I want a real good. And even the perfect people aren't perfect. I mean, they look perfect because they've been retouched to within an nth degree. Yes, and it's so obvious. Like all of the time when that that's a thing, uh, I remember. Uh, I think it was, I believe it was Kate Winslet, um, absolutely raged about um, a photo shoot she did for a magazine, an interview that she made them publish the photos in the following um, edition, how they were. She says, "Because look, what you're representing here to young women yeah. isn't me. I don't look like this." On my best day, I do not look like this. Yeah, yeah. This is not a realistic goal anymore. You're misrepresenting me and how I look. I want you to show people what I actually look like on that photo yeah. shoot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think I definitely don't want to be part of that problem. Um, but also, I don't find it interesting. I don't want to see perfect. It's not, you know, it's not interesting. I want to see real people, but shot in my style. Yeah. Um, which I don't believe there's many people doing anything similar to that at the moment. No, I mean, you, you, you've dabbled with this in the past, haven't you? I, mean, I remember um, one of the music festivals you went to, you set yourself up as a little yeah. booth on the side with a little backdrop, and you were just, just dragging any random person. So, it's like, why I take your portrait? Yeah. And you did like a whole series of those. Yeah, yeah. They can, I think they're actually on my portrait. So, for those who don't know, I've actually updated my website. I'm just showing Rob this now, but you can have a look at scottshothinia.com forward slash people dash two because um, so i've got two running versions of it at the moment but yeah we did all these have i got them on here of course i've not um but we did lots of these like little like mini photo booths where you just grabbed random people in from the street they will be on here shortly because i have actually downloaded them um because i do think they're good photographs and i do think they do sort of stand the test of time almost um and perhaps there's something and then they were very much run and gun they were, and we did it, and we ended up getting a job for HSBC Bank um, off the back of it, where we did these images of people at an event they were sponsoring, where they wanted it shooting in my style. Um, which, to be honest, didn't they appear in um, one of the London airports as you're walking down the the long travelators? They may well have done. I know that they paid a lot of usage on them. Um, but despite these images being black and white, and I will get this into the show notes. They don't look a million miles away from my food work. Like if that was in colour with a bright background, it would be the same thing. Mm. It's not. And I believe all we did was use a bare bulb flash. Yeah, I think one, one speed light, I think. Yes, it was a speed light. It was a Godox yeah. power pack onto a Canon speed light. Because it, yeah. The Godox speed lights come out with all different white balances throughout the day, whereas the Canon ones are... More consistent. Yeah, I don't know what the case is now. This was like a decade ago. Um... But yeah, that's what we're going for, I think. Sort of this sort of vibe, maybe a little bit, but, you know, like people with their hobbies, people doing what they do, maybe the local bowling club, maybe, like, you know, look, I'm fascinated by the sort of Martin Parr um, real people thing. You know, he did like the middle class and he did the working class yeah, and the yeah. upper class sort of things. So I'm fascinated by that sort of documentary, but I like to create the image rather than capture the image. So he's very much like, let me capture it. Let me go and see what's there and take it. I'm like, I want to observe it and then put my twist on it mm. 
So it's not documentary anymore. It's curated, but it's it's based on something real. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think you know a lot of a lot of photographers are very funny. Like if it's not real, it's not a photograph. It's like well, you know, I can't paint, so I have to use a camera. Otherwise, <laughs> and people, someone did once describe photography as painting with light. Yes, yeah, quite, quite. And uh, yeah, I like curating it. I like designing the actual the shot and deciding what it's going to look like and what elements I will keep and what elements I will take away. Um, but I also know that a lot of people like to capture it. There's like a sport in it. It's like I captured this perfect moment out of all the chaos, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, but I haven't got time for that. I've got, <laughs> I've got to get work done. Um, I also, yeah, I don't, I don't like, I don't like being somewhere doing stuff without everybody fully consenting, if that makes sense. Yeah, like, I feel too awkward doing it. Like I wish I could do it. I think I'd really enjoy it if I could get past the awkward stage. But yeah, it's definitely not not for me. And and again, especially if things like street photography and what have you, which you know everyone's obviously done on our, on our various journeys. There's only so many times you can have the conversation. You can't take my photo, mate. And it's like <sighs> I can. <laughs> I can. And here's the reasons why. Yeah, I just oh, I don't know. I haven't got time for. I'm, that. I'm actually finding that now again as a, as, a, as a drone pilot, it's it's come back. I oh, really that, that whole conversation you can't fly that around here, mate. It's like think, okay, here's how the law works. Yeah, yeah let me explain to you yeah, exactly. Well, you call the police, okay? So you're going to call the police and tell them that a fully certified drone pilot is flying a 249 gram drone in an area with no flight restrictions. Good luck with that conversation. Exactly. There's always some sort of busybody though, like yeah. sort of like you know causing the chaos. Um, but yeah, so we've got we've got the plan roughly. I need to find subjects, which is I'm going to call on everybody I know, because and the problem is, and this is my problem, not other people's problem. I don't know the person I'm looking for until I see them. Yes. So it's all good going. Like I can go. Oh, here's 50 people who want to be photographed. I need to know that it is the right person that I'm photographing. Which is why, and it was Simon says that, yeah. that when when you did the. The, the That's right. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because again, you, there's so much foot traffic, and you're like, they're interesting. Like, especially when you get someone a bit older, a bit craggy, you know, every great big bushy beard. Yeah, and, yeah. And do you know, there were some good people at that actually. Maybe because I do know a lot of the festival owners, I could set up something in my style at a festival. Mm. Oh, for sure. Um, but I don't know if I can deal with drunk people anymore. It depends on the festival. Um, I mean, maybe you know, go. Maybe you know, like I remember seeing some um, some photographs somebody did um, sort of down in Cornwall of the you know the, the kind of the you know gentlemen that have been like sailors for years and older that that kind of yeah you know, you know I mean a weathered face sort of thing and there's a whole series of those and I thought that was really interesting because again you know he's like yeah well here he was you know he's a you know um, he was in the navy and then became a fisherman and so on and so forth there's there's a story to the face yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Maybe that is part of the part of the thing. Like, I, I just go and find places where the interesting people are. That's probably a cheaper way to organise it. Mm. I've got less control, obviously, over the setup, but I can probably do it with one light, can't I? I've got thirty two hundred watts in a pack. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah, compared to your, what was it sixty watts for a Canon speed light? Something like that. Remember, we used to have to gaffer tape loads of them together <laughs> to get enough power. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that could be a good a good move. Um, and yeah, so we I sort of know the lighting, but you know, the problem is I want the. It might be the case that we use my new sunlight, the hard lighter, um, just because I want those crisp sharp shadows. But. How flattering are they on a face? Well, this is it. I, I need what I need is to get some people in for a practice day. Yeah. Where we can like use it as a technical practice and be like, right, let's pull this light out, let's pull this light out. Maybe I'll get some assistants in for the day and we'll just like utilize them, just to try and work out what it is. Because what I don't want to do is be lighting every single shoot from scratch. Oh yeah, of course. Like, yeah, you need you need a kind of um setup that works for a broad variety of people. Exactly, exactly. And then it's just a case of like making the images interesting rather than making the lighting interesting because anybody can make the lighting interesting. Like anyone can do a complicated lighting setup. It's just physics. But yeah. it's the actual human element which matters. It's and it, and it's it's not just getting the best out of the person. It's also choosing the right person. Because like sometimes I get sent portfolios and I'm like, these are great photographs, but the subjects suck. Um, we've all kind of seen it. I mean. Um... Again, obviously, I never did portraits to the level that you ever did. But I always find, like, some people that you look at and you think, 
they're very attractive traditionally speaking they're, they'll they'll be great and then you take a photo and they just can't take a good photo yeah then other people absolute um you know what many people consider a plain jane you put you put them in front of a uh, you know a camera and a bit of light and look like a supermodel it's yeah, just, and no, there's no absolutely. Like, reason to absolutely. it there's no you know um method that sh should have been the case um and i remember um a company i used to work for they um they had a receptionist um hannah quite quite tall very 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 slim lady um kind of really kind of curly that kind of irish curly hair kind, yeah, yeah. kind of deal um but again like you know as i say you know, not not an unattractive one but you know nothing you think special um Ended up um, dipping a toe in the modelling world, and the very first job she was the face of K Swiss for twelve months. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I mean, what a fairy tale, you know. But and that's just how it happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And uh, I don't know where people find subjects nowadays, like outside of agencies. Like, I know obviously agencies have got scouts, and that's how they found her. Yeah, and how they find people. But like, I don't know. I think I'm going to hit up some acting clubs like Amdram. Well, I like, can help you with that. Oh, that'd be great. We'll, we'll do that after this. I have many actor type people that would love um, a, a bit of headshotage. Because I need someone to bring the energy. Yeah. Like, because I've been shooting still life for too long. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I've got any energy left. I think I'm like all all calm and collective. I mean, I mean that I can certainly help with. Yeah, perfect. In well, terms of recruitment. Do you know what? We'll probably get on that later today, get some people booked in, and I'll probably film some of the shoots. We can probably set up like a three camera. Maybe we'll get some done on Saturdays when you're in. Yeah. Do a Saturday where we get like six subjects in through the door and just like yeah. nice bit of BTS and yeah, make it all good and like yeah, just blitz through it all. Sound like a plan? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Super. Um, now this. So what we're gonna do now is phone my girlfriend to get her take on what it's like being with a photographer, which I'm sure she has many, many positive things to say. Only positive things. Only I imagine. positive things because I am, of course, perfect. So we'll dive into that. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm just thinking up all of the um, complaints I have. I thought as much. Um, so <laughs> we're just we just thought, we're just making a note that when I was on holiday last week, I was having to work, and then I was remembering the I won't name the client's name, but the holiday wells up all through the night because we definitely got the job and they wanted a treatment. Um, but then they decided they were going with the person they'd used before after all that effort. I think we're in a forest somewhere. Um, but I'm trying, I, I was, well, I was going to say which, which time, because it feels like that's happened quite a few times. But yeah, I do actually know which one. Yeah, I don't think we've had yeah. a holiday where there's not been a, I mean, I mean, to be honest, my ma main marketing strategy is to go on holiday because that tends to be when. Yeah. Yeah, you do always get jobs come in either just before we go. So you have to come late to the holiday or you have to work until like 2 a.m. on the day we fly or, yeah. I mean, or I leave. just think the answer is to just be on holiday all the time, isn't it? So I think that's a pretty good one. I think that's a, I'll, I'll ask our accountant, see what she says, whether it's a tax deductible, <laughs> if it's a, a marketing strategy. So you, you told me that you would never date a photographer. Yeah, but can I, can I explain the background of that? You may indeed. So I worked in advertising um, in my 20s and early 30s. And I worked in central London, working at like big agencies that people would, who were in the industry would know the name of. And there was a certain type of girl. I was a, in client services and there was a certain type of girl who liked to date of the photographers that we came across through work and there was a lot of drama and it never ended well okay and would you say it's changed with modern photographers like a modern gentleman like myself <laughs> <laughs> um well i mean there's similarities i mean there's a lot of drama so what's the personality type of a nearly 40-year-old male photographer? Are we very oh, much, can you Sorry, put us all into, we, into a box? Are we talking about you again? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I would say they tend to catastrophize. Yep. They, um, their moods can be very changeable up and down. Mm -hmm. Um 
They are extremely messy, wait for it, in the home. However, are anally retentive and obsessive in a slight serial killer way in the studio. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, they're workaholics. Passionate, yeah. They tend to put their interest in their career above and beyond everything else. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about work a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. They are um, very prone to not taking photos of like family snaps or anything like that. Yes. They're obsessed with coffee. Yes. Black t-shirts. Black t-shirts are good. Uh, shoes and the quest for finding the most comfortable brand. Yeah, it's currently Blundstone. Yeah, so it was Doc Martens for ages and your hyper-focus on Doc Martens was so intense. You used to talk about them a lot. Yeah. Inclu including the history of them. Yeah. Um, and you had like multiple pairs in, like I reckon at one point may have had about six pairs. Maybe you still have actually. I still have. Yeah. Um, oh, they're hoarders. Yeah. And, and, you can't. What is it hoarding at work or hoarding in everything? I, it's weird actually. It's, it's not hoarding at work. It's being quite utilitarian at work and being quite sort of, um, kind of like, almost, like not very emotional about kit actually. Like, oh, well, this no longer serves me, so it needs to be sold. Um, but at home, I mean, this could just be you, let's be honest, but <laughs> can't, can't get rid of anything in the house unless you were away on a job or I've got a good amount of time to not just sort through it, but to get it out and gone. So, Is that where my remember? stuff disappears to on set, when I'm on set? I, no, no, it's not. I don't do it with your stuff. I wouldn't dare do that. Good, good. It's with things that, because you don't just hoard your own things, you hoard other people's things. You're very sentimental. Yeah, but you try I and get rid of all the children's clothes when they've grown out of them. That's ridiculous. <laughs> just, just keep them forever. Do you remember when I tried to get rid of the sippy cups? Yeah, but it, can you hear this call, Rob? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Hello, I, don't whether, I don't know whether Rob could hear this or not. Yeah, this, this is um, this, this is um, a different window into your life, I'll be the, honest. This is not the Scott Rob knows. <laughs> so you, the kids have these little sippy cups, you know. Yeah, I understand. Oh, the ones like, with a the little funnel. Yeah, yeah you thing. want to keep them because they're cute. No, yeah, Scott. but I said no. to you, okay. let's keep, you could, <laughs> I said you could keep one. Yeah, but I couldn't choose one, so he wanted to keep all of them. So you took them to the studio and then you've admitted you've hidden them in the studio. They're in those blue drawers over there. Yes. So right. what are the negatives of dating a photographer? Because <laughs> so far this all sounds very good. Very passionate, works hard, has a good love for shoes, very Dedi sentimental, dedicated. dedicated. Yeah. What are the downsides? Messy. Creative. So right. messy. <laughs> literally you've just been away for a week and and the children were away as well with with you know they were on their yearly holiday with my parents so i had the house to myself for a five-day period and i cannot tell you how little mess there was it, it was, was chaos it when was, i got back <laughs> it was not <laughs> oh my god so usually because you have quite a healthy beard there's a lot of beard hair everywhere can relate. Yeah, it goes everywhere. Yeah. But what um, I don't understand is so much beard hair falls out, but it's always full. But then the hair on my head, I never see any of that on the floor and it's all disappearing. No, actually, it's on the yeah. way back. Yeah, it is on the way back. It is on moment. the way back, yeah. Yeah, I don't get that, actually. It's a really good point. Yeah, um, it's always baffled me. Um, so, But it is everywhere. We could probably make like a mini you out of it. Are we saying then that dating a photographer is a good thing or a bad thing? I'd say it's a journey. <laughs> Love that non-committee, Holly. <laughs> it's nice work. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, you know it it's um it's something to work through, and 
you have to manage your expectations. You um, that you have to be um, aware that you're on a you're on an emotional roller coaster at all times. You know, because when a job comes in, that here's how it goes with you and I. You come home and say, "Oh, I've been asked to pitch for this job, right?" And yeah. it's worth a lot of money and it's an amazing brand and it involves traveling to cities like New York or Tokyo or somewhere unbelievable. And we're, and I say, that's great, darling, but remember you're just pitching for it and there'll be other photographers having this conversation tonight. And, you know, they might just be doing what agencies do, which is where they've already chosen who they want. And then they're just getting in three quotes from, from a um, accounting point of view, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. But you've already, you're already there. You're you've, you're you're on the aeroplane. You're planning the shots. You're deciding which coffee shops you're going to frequent in this particular That's city. Always the first Google best coffee in Tokyo. Yeah. yeah, and you've already chosen all of the interesting stationery and the various, you know. Um, shops that you're going to find in this amazing city because yeah. you do love a pen and a notebook as we know um, yes i do and and then and i keep saying to you you know just remember just remember it might i mean i think it's really good and it's really exciting and it's you know we should be really proud of your stuff to even be on the list but you know the likelihood is the you know if you look at the percentage it's it's highly unlikely you're going to get this job yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and then you don't get the job and I and handle it very well and with a adult like demeanor. You go into a sort of depression and everything is awful and you start to research if you should become a primary school teacher. <laughs> that happens at least once a month. <laughs> yeah. Should I be yeah. a primary school teacher? And then, but they do not get paid enough. Yeah. And then you go, and then it's sort of you go through the process and everybody's taken along for the ride in the house and we're, your, your mood is quite, you know, you, you show your feelings on your face and then you have to go and lift lots of heavy weights and yep. you usually spend too much money on coffee because uh, yes. it's the only treat you can justify to yourself because it's a consumable that you're going to need anyway. Um, and then we get back on the merry-go-round when the next brief comes in. <laughs> that, that pretty much sounds like my working month. Yeah, it's, um, it's great. And I, and I reckon I only win, what, one in ten jobs? Yeah, I think. probably. Maybe less? Yeah. yeah, maybe less. I mean, you have to remember, anyone who's listening to this and doesn't know this world, that having worked on the other side of the curtain, you you have a roster of photographers that you use in an agency well, you used to when I worked in advertising, and do you, but you do have to get in three quotes for the client because they have to prove to their uh, money people that they're doing due diligence and not spending too much. So you, you have to get these sort of fake quotes in. So yeah. I'm always very aware that most times you get asked for a quote, it won't be actually a genuine possibility of job. No, which is why we do estimates for them and we make them very broad, very rushed and spend about five minutes doing it because... Well, you do that now, but you didn't used to, did you? No, I used to make sure I did the best job possible just yeah. in case. But now I'm just like, they've already decided. They know who they're using. Let's just pluck a number out and yeah, see whether I think we it's... get lucky. Yeah, yeah. I th yeah. But, but you it... know, it's... It's difficult in, in any creative industry, isn't it? There's always so much chance and, it, it, you know, it can literally be that you met someone and they told you about something and then they mentioned you to someone random. And, you know, like it, it, there's so much of that. Yeah, definitely. I think most of my big jobs have been through really bizarre, like someone met somebody and mm. then they knew somebody and somebody asked them if they knew somebody and then we got the job. Well, that's how we met. It is actually, isn't it? Somebody, yeah. somebody, you know, how did we meet? It was a, a book cover mix up, wasn't there? Well, it was a book cover. <laughs> I was being polite, um, yeah. <laughs> so I did, yeah, I did a, I did um, a cookbook where the cover photo was done by a, a food photographer and uh, I wasn't happy with it. And I thought I was maybe being a bit vain and then my agent saw it and went, oh my God, you look awful. And I was like, yeah, I know. And then, thank you. 
thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, I think he said, you look like you're in a pharmaceutical ad. And I was like, that's a really, really good point. That's exactly what I look like. Um, so talk, spoke to the client. Client didn't really want to spend any more money on it, but said, if you can find someone local to you, and I, I was and am in Leicester, in the middle of the UK. And if you can find someone local to you and they can shoot it in your kitchen, so there couldn't be any fee for location and it had to be in a certain budget. And I didn't know anyone. So I put out a Facebook request, which I could probably dig back and find actually. Um, And I just said, does anyone know anyone? And then a mutual friend of ours said you. Yep. And it was between you and there was another lady who had taken loads of pictures of the boys when they were babies. And uh, I sort of sent the details of both of you to the client and the client chose you. They were right to do so. Good client. And you turned up looking quite worse for wear and quite anxious Well, I do believe that we were told about the job on the day. Really? Because I do believe that me and my assistant were actually in the pub prior to the job. Yeah, I think you might have been under the influence. You definitely, (laughs) you've kind of looked like you just come from someone's house that you might have stayed over at, who you might not even know their surname, let's be honest. Well, no, no, no. Paul and I were having pints when we found out. And I think, yes. Yeah, day drinking again. Yeah. Yes. It's a good pastime of the uh, unsuccessful photographer. Yeah, yeah. Convincing no time yourself for that anymore. That you're having a creative chat. We yeah. were having a creative chat, actually. We were discussing what we we're yeah. going to do later that evening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, so that was quite a strenuous sort of link. And that's why I'm now a food photographer. Because I shot your yeah. portrait, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not quite as clear cut as that. I mean, you, you carried on doing weddings for quite some time. Uh, but I didn't take any more bookings once I decided that. And the problem is with weddings is that people book you three years in advance like idiots. Yeah, I thought you were going to say the problem is with weddings, people get divorced and then they want to use you again. But I was like, oh, yeah, I have yeah, had that a few times is. as well, yeah. Yeah, you but have, yeah, they, haven't you? They book so far in advance that it's just once you've decided you've had enough and you're done with it, you've still got several years of shooting. Yeah, and, it's and just, I feel it's like horrific. I was there with you on every one of those weddings because, again, there was a lot of drama. There was a minor amount of drama. But I was shooting a wedding and getting paid £1,200 and working for, like, 18 hours and then the next day getting, like, fifteen grand for taking a photograph of a biscuit. It was, it was very yeah, difficult towards yeah. the end to, like, justify the... I know, fatigue. I know. You drank a lot of energy drinks and... Yeah, monster There was a lot juice. of coming back at two in the morning and whinging about backing up and all that kind of thing oh, but you Christ, know we, yeah. we got we got through it didn't we, we did we? get we through, through it. it and now i'm a reformed character my uh everything's a lot calmer nowadays though but that i think is comes it? with yes it is actually i'll have you know let me just tell you now everything's a lot calmer i will actually back scott off on this yeah see rob <laughs> knows everything's a lot calmer because now there's nothing that can go wrong that i can't fix And I've been doing it long enough that I don't have to be as stressed about every single paycheck, which makes a huge difference, I think. Yeah, no, I'm not not disputing you're good at your job, obviously. I mean, you wouldn't be in the position you're in. But, like, what I'm saying is it's like a swan, isn't it? It's like everything looks very graceful on the front, you know. But at home, you you can often be quite chaotic and quite stressy. These are all lies, just so everyone knows. I'm not chaotic and stressy. I'm calm like a cucumber. So what and this you is, catastrophize yeah. every, about everything. That, that I do. But that's, but that's probably why you're successful, because you always assume everything's going to go wrong. And so you're always working like a madman. So. I think Rob can attest to this when we pack kit for shoots and do backups. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Like, do we need 17 backups of this? Well, yes, absolutely. 100% need 17 backups. O- only less polite on set, usually. Yeah, there is a li- well. I, I am better. Back at not- in the back in the day, back in the day, in fairness. Oh yes. yeah, God, Rob, let's talk about that. Jesus let's Christ. not talk about what I used to be like back <laughs> in the day. He <laughs> used to be on set. Oh my God, I could never say that. He's had, he's had some tough love from me on that. I am now a reformed character, and I take my stress out on myself yes. internally, and then go to the gym. I mean, I will say that we currently have the best version of Scott that I've known, and I've <laughs> Scott, known Scott yeah, now like for Scott, like eleven years. Scott three I don't know. Like we're about to go for the upgrade to four point oh. We've got a couple really? of years. Yeah, yeah. 
two years oh, isn't it until I'm 40 and um, get my red sports car two years isn't it yeah Hang two on. years how old am I like 38 yeah yeah you are I always forget how old I am and then have to work backwards, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, red sports car and probably... Oh, I can't wait for the, start, the breakdown in the year before. shooting film only. The, the midlife crisis, the yeah. classic. Yeah, yeah, can't wait. I've just had mine, so it's fine. It's good. You've you got, to, got to do it. Yeah, but you're, at, you're in a different... You're at a different level, aren't you, Rob? Well, yeah, I went for the... Um, <laughs> rather than the Porsche. That's true. How did that go? Not well. Hopefully the Porsche goes better. (laughs) You should have just got a dog, Rob. I go all about that cat life, honestly, because they need less maintenance. Get a cat. Yeah. Yeah, cats are good. Monkey's nice, isn't she? Yeah, the uh, the, 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 the crazy old cat man starter kit. Yeah. Yeah. Cat man life. This is your new era. Yeah. Um, Cats are okay, apart from when they bite you. But, you know. Dogs bite you. Well, not oh, if yeah, they're well trained. Currently got a slash across my face and where Teddy battered me in the face with the giant paws. Yeah, but that was that was love. That wasn't that was, yeah, that was love. He hit me because he loves me. That's Oh god. <laughs> oh god. That's yeah, where we're okay. at on that one. Um but yes, so oh, we're all in agreement then that dating a photographer is good. Well, what's, the, mean, what's look, the positive? What's the positive of dating a photographer? There must be one positive. Come on. They're very pretty. We are very pretty. I'll take that. Especially yeah, heading to they're 40. they're very pretty. They're very... Um, they're, because they are quite vain, given that they spend their whole life looking and judging other people and things through a lens, they do keep on top of their own personal upkeep. So I don't think I've ever been in a relationship with anyone who has as many products as you do this is a lie i do not have products this is all natural this is- okay <laughs> right do you know what i'll come back on the podcast and i'll come into the studio and i will bring bo- the boxes from the bathroom of all your stuff it's and just we a bit of skin cream it. and you know some product hair products and bits. skin cream we've got i can't remember how many different acids we have for your face to kind of stave off the aging process but there's a lot <laughs> Oh, I'm never recovering from this. <laughs> and what did you say to me last week when we were out for dinner? You said, oh, I know. You looked at me and you were looking, I mean, you are a very handsome man and I'm sure you know that. And you're looking very dapper and handsome. And I was thinking, oh, I'm so lucky. And then, and then you went, look really seriously at me. And I thought, oh my God, what's he going to say? And you went, do you think I should dye my hair? And I went, <laughs> God, I mean, but I said, darling, you used to dye your hair grey so that you could get more women. Silver fox. Yeah. yeah. But now, now it's, like, it's gone past the tipping point now. That's what you said. You went, no, it's gone a bit. And I said, no, I said, it's really like nice. And he said, yeah, but I saw a photo of it from the wedding and it's very great. I was like, no, I, I, I like it. I was very great. I did look a lot older than everyone else at the wedding. But no, I mean, you don't. You look more sophisticated and more distinguished, not... Not older, Distinguished, different. distinguished. So what was there, apart from me being pretty, <laughs> that, <laughs> I now feel slightly objectified, is there a positive to dating a photographer? Um, we'll cut this pause out so it doesn't seem as long. I, the thing is, I think a lot of your qualities that are really good aren't to do with you being a photographer. So do you want the purest answer, which is, you know photography adjacent only qualities photographer adjacent only yeah yeah um uh okay um you're very um good at checking and rechecking things so like if we're going on holiday you're like right when we you won't pack last minute like you're good at you because you have to do that sort of stuff for work you're very sort of like no right let's get on with it let's recheck it and then things like when we leave the house you're very good at sort of turning everything off and going back and rechecking and like, i mean that could be your ocd rather than photography but <laughs> sounds like a personality disorder more than anything but yeah <laughs> yeah that's good good stuff very good we're well, brilliant thank you thank you for that honest appraiser <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I mean, I don't know what you expected. Oh, I'll tell you what else you're really good at. Go on. Um, 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't know the proper name for it, but it's like... Um... You know, this is a family show, Holly, so just be careful what you're about to say. <laughs> Rob, Rob, you have said too much about yourself there, haven't you? Uh, I'm just trying to stop it, um, Scott getting cancelled, that's all. <laughs> trying to keep it on track. Got to no, get that monetization. It's a matter of time, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, so it, it's where you line stuff up straight in straight rows. Oh, knolling. Knolling. I was going to say knolling. turning, but that's to do with um, lettering. Spacing and lettering, yeah. Yeah, so knolling is what God people do more. who have too many possessions and can't sort them out because there's too much stuff. If you get all of your chaos and put it all at right angles to the table, it looks neatly organised. My entire studio is knolled. It, otherwise yeah, it's and when you, see, when, when you see someone else doing it, yeah. You get really excited, like you've met someone else in the cult, like some kind of Freemasons thing. You're like, oh, look, yeah, they always do be it knolling. too. Always be knolling. You've got to knoll everything. If it's not at a right angle, I'm quite upset that my, you can see my phone and battery here are nicely knolled, but Rob can. But I've had go, to see? turn my laptop off centre so it doesn't look weird in camera, and it's really bugging me that it's not at a right angle to everything else. But Oh, yeah, you're really... Oh, the other thing you're really good at is going to the cinema. Yes. We're good at, like, I'd say that's one of our, one of your good, like, you're good at going to the cinema and you are you are a good um, passenger in sort of watching other people's work and appreciating it. You know how some, because I've met a lot of photographers in my previous life and a lot of them are not very good at appreciating other people's work. They're kind of, the, the ego's too big. No, or I didn't know that. The, the anxiety and feelings of worthlessness are too big that they can't, give away praise like they're very you know you know the kind of people you know what i mean yeah i i, I yeah i don't think i could live like that mostly from like self-preservation if you start thinking like that then everything's going to stress you out and i think and we've touched on this in um, in other podcasts as well like you draw lots of inspiration from like a very beautiful frame in a movie Yes, like you know, we talked about you know, like the the David Finches and the and, and and you know the Wes Andersons and so on. You're like, I want mine to look like that. Yeah, especially Wes yeah. Anderson. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, he copies a lot. You're right, Rob. Yeah, I do. Draws uh, inspiration from Holly. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Legally, I'm being inspired by yes. not copying. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I only said that to wind you up. Yeah, you are, but you're very good at sort of like whenever we go and see a film afterwards, you you're always sort of very. Um, you'll comment about different parts of it and you'll say, oh, it's really interesting when they did that and they sort of cut it with that and I really loved the way that they angled that shot and the lighting was amazing and you're very appreciative of other... Same, actually, with photography. You regularly grab your phone at night. I mean, you're literally on your phone the whole time, but you will show me your phone and go, look, look at this photo. And it's often just a random person who's not even in the industry and you're very complimentary about other people's work and I think that that's quite rare Oh, that's interesting. So I assumed that... Obviously, I don't really socialise with many photographers. We don't um, really socialise, darling. Well, I don't have time, do I? I've got, I've got to be having chaos that's at not. home. Do you, know how, not, do you know how much time it takes me to make as much mess as I make? Darling, you're like a whirlwind. You were <laughs> back, and within four minutes, the house was utterly disgraceful. I was like, how does he do it? It's actually like an Olympic sport. Like, wow. I'm just very, very uh, effective. Yeah, aren't you? Yes. Anyway, on that lovely note, we'll uh, <laughs> leave you to it before you do any more damage to my reputation of being organised, stable and absolutely on it at all times. Yeah, yeah. sorry. There's a <laughs> and then, yes, then we'll explain to everyone else once you've gone which bits were true and which bits were lies. Um... Well, I want a right to reply, so I will be checking this. It's the YouTube comments, which is obviously the, the, the barometer for all modern industries. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because people who comment on YouTube are obviously really sane and, you know, well, of course. well balanced. And everything, everything you read on the internet is true, right? Oh, yeah, I, I, found, I found the tab recently. So there's a bit called held for review, which is where the bad comments get automatically filtered to. But if they're really bad, there's a secret bit at the bottom that you click on it. It keeps all the really bad stuff. Oh, my word. There are some unhinged people out there. So it's like where the death threats are. Yeah, pretty much. That and in my inbox, which apparently is, you know, the go-to thing to do is to email death threats in. But there we go. Oh, can't, my Lord. Can't win them all, can we? No, no. Never read, never read the comment all. section. Yeah. <laughs> never read the comment section. Um, but there we go. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. We're Thanks off to um, take and Teddy to puppy class in a bit. Oh, I hope he has a nice time. I hope he's better behaved than when he goes with me. 
Well, hopefully he's not worse behaved. He's currently out cold, uh, having a little nappy. But there we go. Oh, little baby. Okay. Well, I'll see you later. Yeah. Thank, thank you for doing lots of damage, and I'll. Uh... That's okay. Uh, Love you. <laughs> bye bye. Now, of course, 90% of what Holly said was completely fictitious and absolutely not true. I am obviously very calm, collected, never panic, and I'm not highly emotional. Of course. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably a good stage to wrap it up today, Rob. Yeah, well, hopefully this could be the one that goes viral. Hopefully not. Hopefully this is the one that gets the lowest amount of views um, where I am just, yes, nobody realises that really, despite looking often like I've got it all together, it is complete chaos at home. And you've seen the chaos at the other side. Um, there is quite a lot of chaos. I mean, uh, again, co compared to many years earlier, that I've known you over the 11 years or so. Um, I would say probably about the first two to three years, you were the absolute harbinger of chaos. I was. I was, I was all, the, all the chaos. <laughs> the Tasmanian devil of chaos, if you will, is what you <laughs> All were. the chaos, all the time, at full force. But now I think I'm pretty chill. Yeah, I mean, as I say, the, the, the transformation's been remarkable, honestly, um, since you've been with Holly. And, yeah, I, th I think some of it's been with Holly and her telling me to just get it together. Uh, and I think a major part of it is, annoyingly, financial stability. Yeah, and dare I say, getting a bit older, mate. Yeah, that helps. Um, but I mean, it was I, I did the stupid thing of leaving my job with no savings to be a photographer. And that was stressful. I would not recommend that to anybody. And I think it probably took me a decade to become financially stable in the career. Yeah, but I think it was that, that initial year of panic where, where you had no safety net. Kind yeah, it, it wasn't that I had no safety net. I often didn't have rent. It was that yeah. bad. Um, maybe we should have an episode on that at some point. The bad years, the uh, the chaos and the financial instability. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Uh, but yeah, we'll leave you there. I'll see you soon. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.